Welcome back, everybody. We are on episode podcast number six. We're at six deep right now. This is amazing. Uh, always with my boy, WT. Very, 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 very good friend of mine. First, I want to say, one, I love your sweater. Two, I love your hat. Three, I love your background. Look at this, man. This ba- His background's getting better than mine. I like it. I like it a lot. So, uh, WT, my man, uh, how you doing, buddy? What's new? What's exciting, man? Episode six. Let's go. Doing great, man. Staying busy. Uh, this is going to be a doozy of a cast here. Yes. I'm like that guy and that meme from Horrible Bosses. I got notes everywhere. You can't see them right now. So <laughs> if you see me looking at things, there's so much this week that I can't retain everything. So my old brain, I got to have a few notes this week. And uh, yeah, everything's going pretty good. The job's been a little crazy. I still don't know what's going on. So that's been a little bit stressful. But uh, how's things going for you? Things are good, man. Grinding away, still doing, you know, we're, we're grinding, we're streaming every single day pretty much. Um, actually, I want to say, uh, before anything like that, I want to say uh, thank you for everybody in the Guild of Guardians community. There's a bunch that do come through the stream. I'll put the link below if you guys want to come by, get to know us, get to chat a little bit. You know, we get some more uh, live chatting, you know, between us and stuff. Because, yeah, there's a lot of Guild of Guardians uh, community, like WT is always in. There's a bunch of people that come through the stream. So if you ever want to get to know the, the Guild of Guardians community on another level, on a personal level, come by the stream, hang out, and we just, you know, we, we have fun. We, we chat. But, yeah, things have been really, really, really good i can't complain you know busy 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 as always um there is a lot to talk about like there is a ton to talk about this week a lot of notes there was an ama uh just tons and tons and tons of stuff going on and uh we're gonna try to keep it uh as short as possible we still want to get down to the meat of it all but we're gonna try to keep it as short as possible because you know it is a lot to take in so um first actually before we even start i gotta say they did a valentine's day contest and you're looking at the champ, yours truly, the man, the myth, the legend. Uh, I was dying. When I watched your video, I was in tears, man. He goes up to the – you guys got to watch. I'll put the link to the video in, in the in the description below as well so you guys can check it out for yourselves. But it was hilarious. He did a really, really, really good job. I just want to say he did a really good job. I was in tears, man, when you asked the, the cash if she takes GOG tokens. I almost I, – I was in tears. So well-deserved. Uh, but, yeah, getting into that. Um, they had, uh, what it was, uh, first to third was like 1500 tokens, something like that. And then they extended it to six people, right? Six people ended up winning or something like that. Yeah. They, they had such a huge response and there were so many great quality entries that mm-hmm. they, they didn't want to turn any, all these quality entries away. So they expanded to six and went from like 1500 GOG tokens, roughly up to 2000 given away. So that's pretty cool. Quick side note, we did not plan this. I, I can't believe it's it's like we're destined to hang out together. While I'm dressing up and doing a video, <laughs> this beauty here <laughs> makes his own dress-up video about Nintendo, and it was absolutely hilarious. I was dying laughing, especially, mm-hmm. like, out of nowhere, King, uh, uh, Donkey Kong shows up, and I was not expecting it, and he rolled with it like it it, it didn't even skip a beat, <laughs> and it totally caught me off guard, and I was just dying laughing, so... Nice, nice dress, Amazing. nice hat with the Thank Princess you. Peach and uh, Luigi as well. Thank you. There's definitely a few costume changes in that one. Uh, totally unplanned, just kind of happened, just whatever, you know what I mean? But it was great. <laughs> uh, but yes, congratulations again for the Valentine's Day um, prize. That's awesome. That's actually a really, really nice prize. Very generous of uh, Guild of Guardians to do that. That was very, very, very nice. Another thing, guys, speaking of the podcast, we are we – are the the competition we did a twitter competition uh to see you know to name our podcast we want a name we want to have an official name for it there's been a lot of really really good entries uh don't forget to drop in your entries on the on the tweet there's a tweet that wt put out uh you could put them there you could put the comments below if you have ideas or you want to put your ideas in the video comments below here as well you could do that so we could see it but yes definitely check out the tweet i'll put the link in that as uh for his tweet as well uh we're trying to get a name we want to make it official right now we just call it the podcast you know what i mean i mean but we got to do a little better than that you know we got to do a little better than that so uh uh, yeah, think of something clever, and uh, yeah, we're going to pick, I guess, the top three or something like that, or the, the community's mm-hmm. going to pick top three. We're going to figure it out, and then we're going to kind of narrow it down to one, uh, which is going to be fun. Okay, so there's a lot to talk about. A lot, a lot, a lot to talk about. Uh, Sorcier, I believe that's how you say that, right? From uh, Blackpool yep. had... Uh, we'll jump right in. We're just going to jump right into it. He was on a podcast uh, this week, and he had an idea about the guild tokens uh, required to make lesser adventure guilds. So basically, you'd need a guild token to kind of make or get materials to make a lesser adventure guild? Is that what you're talking about? So uh, explain to me what he was explaining there, because I didn't actually hear that podcast, to be honest. So tell me what was going on in that podcast and what he was getting with it. What, what was, what's the point of that? All right, so this is the Guardians United mm-hmm. podcast. Uh, QL hosted. He does a fantastic job. And he had a uh, sorcier from Blackpool. And they talk about Josiah's fireside chat from a month or two ago. That's about two months ago now, and they're breaking it down. Very, very good podcast all the way through. It's very... 
they went like over an hour, roughly an hour and 10 minutes or something like that. And they're doing a part two soon. But the one thing that blew me away, and it's a fantastic idea, and I hope Gilded Guardians uh, at least looks at the possibility of this. He was talking about uh, filling a need. So like the adventure tokens right now, they're limited. And Gilded Guardians has said that they reserve the right to make more of these down the road to facilitate new players for the tens of millions that they're anticipating coming into this game. So he had the idea, Sorcerer, uh, why not have the Adventure Guild token ho owners have the ability to collect either cubelets or other resources, whatever it might be, and to fashion a new guild. And this guild may be not as powerful as the original Adventure Guild, but it's a guild to onboard new players. And obviously the Adventure Guild token owners would get the proceeds from the sale. And maybe this would be amazing. Just tie a small percentage of whatever the guild that you create makes to trickle up to you. It'd be like a cool way of staking if you are an adventure guild token holder. And it was, it blew my mind. I was like, and this is exactly why I say QL's got to stay on. And I think he is, and I hope he is. He comes up with these cool guests and they come up with these cool ideas and stuff. And it really expands the community. And I absolutely love the idea. The whole podcast is good, but this was the one that I was just like, wow, what a great idea. So Guild of Guardians, if you're listening, Get get involved with the sorcerer guy, or or come up with something like that. I love the idea. That's actually, that's a really interesting idea, and I like that because again, like we say, they, there's so, there's not very many not very many guilds out there. There's ten mythic ones, and you know the list goes on. It's very there's not many guilds, and they want fifty million or whatever they said people playing. Um, I mean, come on, that's they're not even close to those numbers. It's not it's not even a, a fraction of a of a percent. It's so they have to do something. I know they said they're going to build more guilds or do something like that, but I think that's a really good idea. I think that's a really good idea where you know because it helps the people that invested early as well, and it you know maybe they can have like branches of their alliance. I, I think it's a good idea. I think that's a really good idea, and I think there's there's potential for something like that. To be honest, um, I like that idea. Very very good idea. Uh, there was also an AMA on the fifteenth, and right this is this was beautiful. Right after the AMA. They did a, um, they put out uh, like a demo leak or whatever, right? And then mm -hmm. the famous snapshot was taken. I love these. Oh, yeah. I love these, okay? Um, there's a lot of speculation. Obviously, Alpha is a big one. Um, snapshot was taken. As, as someone that's invested in a project, you want to hear those words. Snapshot taken is very, very, very important. Last time they gave out profile pictures and tokens and stuff, which was super, super generous. I think, I think they went... Uh, above, hey, look at this, my, my timer going. I think they went above and beyond. Um, I think they went way, f like they, they gave enough. They gave more than enough last time. I think they went too far, which is, you know, not a bad thing, but uh, they gave a lot. Okay. So snapshot taken. Now, could this be another airdrop? You think this is alpha? What do you think it is? What, what's your, what's your speculation on the snapshot? Well, from the AMA, I know that they want to open up the test net version of alpha to the public. Now, I did get confirmed they plan on doing that slowly. What numbers that will be? I don't know. Could it be tied to the PFPs? Obviously, yeah, maybe that's the popular thought out there. Um I I was thinking about this and it just it just seems like they can't they can't let in all 8,000ish at once, I don't think. I don't think they want to go that fast. So, I don't know, maybe I wouldn't be surprised, and this is just wild speculation. Uh, what if they did another PFP that was pets, as they are super popular? Interesting. That, that would be. I, I think that would be pretty crazy. I, I think they're looking to energize the community a bit after the last couple of weeks with the the news, and the uh, obviously bearish sentiment of it. And hey, I I, I kind of lean in towards something cool like that versus the uh, access to the testnet alpha. I agree with you. I actually, I definitely agree with you. I think, you know, again, we talked about what happened last week or a couple of weeks ago when they gave the news and it happens. It's, it, and we've talked about it before where, where delays, that's normal in this industry, but whenever there is delays and stuff, you know, it's the momentum is what you're killing. You know, everyone's momentum, everyone's hyped. Everything's going up. Prices are going up. Everyone's amped up for this game. Alpha's coming, whatever. And then it's like, Hey, listen, we got to be realistic with, with our investors, with our players. Listen, you know, things happened. We had things get pushed back a little bit. 
you know, and they had to deliver the news and I'm, you know, they had to deliver it. And so it's not news they want to give. It's not, you know, they don't want to have to do that, but they have to do it. And it kind of kills the momentum a little bit. So when something like this happens, they need to be able to keep people interested and, and paying attention to this project because people are going to start being like, ah, you know what? There's, we got, now we got a year or whatever. I'm going to start looking at other projects. They got to keep your interest. They got to keep you invested. They got to keep your eyes on their project. And I think that's what they're doing. I think by doing a snapshot, maybe they, like you said, there's maybe more profile pictures or, you know, whatever it's a pet pictures, whatever it is, there's something, they got to do something for it. I don't, I don't think alpha is the only thing. Maybe alpha is a part of it, but I think there's got to be more because it's got to bring that hype back and that interest back and people talking again. And yo, look what I got posting pictures on, on Twitter, bringing that, the hype, the hype back to the project, uh, saying, look, yo, po they post up their pet pictures or whatever is coming their way. And it gets people that have no idea what the project is. It puts eyes on it because everyone's tweeting about it, talking about it. That's how this business works. It's the hype behind it. And, and the more people talk about it, the more people see it and the more people get involved. So I think they have to do, I don't think they have a choice. I think they have to do something to kind of bring that, kind of bring everyone back on the rail saying, yo, yo we're still good. Uh, this is what you're getting or whatever. Let's keep moving forward together. Regardless, I'm here either way. Uh, I understand everything that happened and, and, the, and I understand it and, it and it's a normal thing, but there's some people that they have that short term view and that's in this kind of industry, you can't have those short term views. You got to look long term and that's the way I see it as well. So um, mm -hmm. I agree with you. I think there's something more than just the elf. I hope so. I think it should be uh, to be honest, just to keep that interest going, but uh, time will tell time will definitely tell. So uh, speaking of the AMA, uh, I got a couple notes here. So after the Christmas break, they reviewed everything and that's when they decided they needed more time. It was about six months delayed. So they didn't know this before the break. And, uh, this is one thing I really want to talk about. And I, I have, you know, listen, we, I love this, the community. I love the Gilded Guardians team. I love the Gilded Guardians people in the community, but we got to keep it honest here as well. So they said, uh, they were 80% done and it's the 20% that's pushed it back so far. Now, if I got to be honest, that doesn't sound like 80% to me. That doesn't sound anywhere close to 80%. That sounds more like 40 to 50%, maybe 60% around that area. Maybe they were done and it's the other half that they need to get done uh, in order to do it. Now, I don't know what the problems were, but uh, what are your thoughts on it all? What are your thoughts on this 80, 20%? Talk to me. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I got a... This one didn't sit oh, really well with me. I got to be honest. Uh, everybody knows I love this project. I love the team. And they've done nothing but be professional and on point with things very much. And I think maybe, I don't think that they were being misleading intentionally. I think maybe they just got, maybe they just got too busy and weren't clearly stating the the state of what is going on with GOG. So little context here. Uh, around the 21st of December, we had all these big announcements, token unlocks, extra liquidity, lots of hype. Uh, at the same time, there was all these promises of marketing and factor in that, I think it was in the fireside chat with Josiah, if I'm not mistaken, uh, they threw out there the 80% of the game was done. And that blew me away because my expectations were kind of very conservative and I was thinking 60, maybe 65% done. And then when they said 80, I was like, whoa, mm -hmm. Well, maybe they're further along than we expected, and you can't you can't throw that out there with all us uh, degenerate GOG followers plus the investors because it it definitely built the hype. And what I think they were talking about was the game itself. The playable game was right. eighty percent done, and they were separating the game with the blockchain aspect of it. And that's fine; you can separate that, but you got you got to be a little bit more clear about that because it's going to rile people up. Like it, it did, it, it riled me up. I was more bullish because like, oh wow, we're closer than I thought. Mm. And that's great. The game is 80% done, but we are bringing in a brand new technology that nobody has mastered. And th then they're integrating it. And I believe when they say they didn't know that it was gonna work out like this, and they mm. probably got 80% or whatever done in the game and started to try and put it together with the blockchain. And that's probably where they hit a wall. And I'm just guessing here. And that's why they were like, all right, this is going to take more time and we need to be transparent with the public, which I appreciate in it. And that's what I think happened. And my big, my biggest beef is careful when you throw it out there because us, us DJs will take it and run with it. All right. 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 <laughs> no, I, and again, I, I agree with you on that. I think the game itself is 
close to done. It's just an integrating everything. Cause this is tricky. So when you're dealing with money, like normal games, you're not, you're not worrying about, cause people are going to be investing a lot in it and there's returns and, and there's a whole other aspect to it. It's not just the game itself. So they have to be very, very, very careful. And I actually appreciate that they are being extra careful uh, because the, the way the, I listen, the way they talk and they're very, very clear that this is a game first. It's a game first. The play to earn side is the bonus. It's just, that's like bonus playing. It's a game first. They want to make sure the game lasts. They want to make sure the game has longevity. It's not just kind of like a quick, you're in, you're out, quick burn, uh, turn around. They don't want that. They want the game to be stable. They want the game to work and they want the game to be good. And then, yeah, you're going to play and earn uh, and you can earn by playing this really good game. And I think that's the right way to do it. I totally agree with them on it. Uh, but yeah, I agree. I think the the 80% thing, I, I think they kind of, I don't know what happened. I don't have the answers. Maybe they hit some all, like you said. But uh, I think we're on the same page on that, man. I think I, just, I think they need to be more careful, with, especially when you're dealing with numbers like that. Especially when people, like you say yourself, man, it's like, dude, once people hear that, they're like, all right, I got to buy more. I got to do this. And, and it does uh, play with the bank a little bit, you know? Uh, all right. Yeah. Uh, so in the alpha, um, there's going to be no assets or progress will be saved, which I think is, is, is fair. You know, you can't, uh, you can't be giving people, you know, a huge leg up like that. Uh, I right. think that's fair. So no assets or progress will be saved, but some form of some form of tokens will be earned. And I think that's fair too. You know, you're playing the alpha, you're testing the game, you're doing that stuff. There's a little bit of a reward for that. I think that's fair. Um, but yeah, I also agree. Progress should not be saved. I think when the game gets released, everyone should start at the beginning and go, um, thoughts on that thoughts on, uh, what do you think the tokens are going to be very minimal? Do you think it's just going to be kind of just to test the process to see if you can actually earn while you play? Uh, talk to me. Yeah, I think both it's going to be possibly testing to see if you can earn while you play i don't know if they can i think they're gonna have to keep that separate i, I don't know exactly how that works i know testnet is testnet so mm. nothing is saved on there because of it right and he see clear he even said that all the tokens assets and everything are fake so you're not going to be able to continue that progress and as far as how many tokens are they going to give out i think it'll be minimal i think they want to give somebody or everybody something for mm putting in their time and efforts and maybe it'll depend on how much information you provide. I, I'm not sure, but I, I don't see it be, I don't see it being anything groundbreaking or life changing. It's, it's just a, a small thank you for helping out. I agree. Yeah. It's uh, I think, and I think it's fair too. You know, you're testing the game, you're testing for bugs, you're letting, giving your feedback, you know, that's just, that's just the way it is. I think that's, that's very fair as well. Um, they said maybe for GOG NFTs in uh, the test net. So maybe you can use NF NFTs. Uh, I don't know how that would work. I don't know if that's a thing. I don't think that's, that's, that's doable. I don't know. I, I mean, what do I know? But I don't, I don't know about that. I don't know. I think this Me is kind of, I, yeah, I think they want to, but I, if I had to bet, I would bet they're not going to be able to, or that it's going to be too complicated. And they say, now nah, we'll wait. I, I, all my, all my, all my aspects of this is everything is conservative. Everything is pushed back. Everything is slowed down. Now. Right. So one idea I just literally came up with right now, which I mean, maybe it's a bad idea. Maybe it's a good idea, but maybe you can have like a, you can pick what heroes you use. It could help where it's like, okay, you have these heroes. Do you want to use these heroes? Maybe you don't have these heroes and, oh, now I played with this hero. Maybe I'll want this one or something like that. I don't know. Maybe it'll give you a chance to play with certain different heroes and maybe it'll uh, open things up. Maybe not. I don't know what they can do. Uh, they currently right. have 40 devs and 40 artists working on uh, the, the, the game and they currently want to hire more. Uh, do you think more, more debt, more devs, more artists, do you think that's going to speed it up? Do you think it's just going to kind of, uh, you know, help a little bit? Do you think it's going to help a lot? Like what, what do you think by help uh, hiring more artists? Do you think it's what's, what's, what, what, what's going to happen? Hiring more artists. Do you think it's really going to help that much more? So here's what everyone thinks. Everyone thinks, oh, we'll just hire more people and it'll go faster. And that's not how it works mm -hmm. at this time in this space. And by, by the best analogy I can give is cooks in a kitchen. And right, right now, their kitchen is the size that it is. And it's probably chuck full of cooks right now. And adding another cook is just probably, it might actually slow things down mm -hmm. because there's not enough room for all these cooks to do what they need to do. And the other aspect of it is in this industry, the quality of cooks and the number of cooks out there is severely limited because right. this is all new. So the best and the brightest out there, they have a monopoly on their skill and their talents. And guess what? All the big companies are trying to get the best and the brightest, and there's a scarce amount of them. So you can't just go out there and find these people that are qualified and able to do what you need them to do. And then the other factor is, is your kitchen big enough to get all these cooks in there and it not slow things down? So they're, they're probably on top of it and they're probably aware of it. 
And as they can, I'm sure they will add talent, but I'm pretty sure they're probably maxed out right now, if I had to guess. Yeah, I, I, I again, I agree with you. I think the, uh, the, the more doesn't always mean better. You know what I mean? More doesn't always mean better. And uh, I think people don't realize that. I think, they feel, oh, just hire more artists. It doesn't work that way. It's not, it doesn't, more does not always equal better. Sometimes it could set you back. There could be internal problems, whatever. Not every artist is good. You know, you're not going to get that good artist. You know, trust me, I, I, I'm in other games where I have my own custom skins in the games. And sometimes you get a, a, an artist and you're just like, what is that, man? Like, you know, you get an artist that does a really good job you're like yo that looks awesome and then you know you send another skin they make it, and you're like what what is you know no 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 you know what i mean like it's it's not as easy as people think it's like oh just hire more artists it doesn't work that way you know so um yeah i agree with you on that too um and they also mentioned the russia ukraine thing that didn't slow it down that's you know good to hear that that didn't cause any delays um which is also yeah very good to hear scary moment there um okay so and i one thing i really like is any partner that imx has they have access to that is huge i don't think people realize how big that is uh they obviously just partnered up with uh, gamestop and mm -hmm. uh you know which you know who knows what's gonna happen with that but there's big that's huge big opportunities there i think a lot bigger than people realize again um that's like you know they're all in that same pool they can help each other they can do cross promos or whatever it is uh to help gog gog to help another company get that audience in their game vice versa um massive 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 what are some of the ones or what do you think of that what are some of the ones you think that can they really benefit from or what are the ones that what are you thinking when you hear that Oh, I, I was that perked my ears up immediately that they have access. I, I kind of thought they did, but them coming out and saying it confirms it. And that's just it's super bullish. I mean, the GameStop one alone, you got you know, my thoughts on that. Oh, yeah. Microsoft is lurching around in the background somewhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, IMX, while maybe they're not thought of as a giant corporation, they are put positioning themselves, in my opinion, to become a giant corporation. Mm -hmm. And they're taking the steps and walking the walk of being a corporation, and they are mixing it up with some big, big power players in this space. Uh, I, I can't even begin to emphasize how big this is and bullish that they have access to these. It's huge, just huge. I agree. Yeah, just the GameStop one alone. That's that's just one out of everything they have. It's massive, mm -hmm. and uh, they'd be silly not to uh, try to you know jump on that and benefit from it. I I think that that alone is massive. Um, all right. So one thing I love to hear when they say long term goal is what they're looking at. Uh, long term stable fun game with a stable economy is what they look for, and long term players and long term investments. The ones that come in to flip, that's not their focus, and it shouldn't be. Uh, if you're coming in to risk to to make a, a quick profit on the game that's on you that's not on the gaming company they're trying to build a sustainable game and and i'll be honest with you if i was them i wouldn't care for the people that are coming in for a quick buck buck that have no care for the game you know you're trying to cater to the people that are there to build this brand not the ones that are build their bank account and, and forget about you see you later i i think the they should be focusing on the long term that's why i'm totally for them delaying the game and uh, the people that are just here for a quick buck I don't really care for either. You know, you want to make your money. It didn't work out. That's what it is. When you're investing and trying to flip things quick, that's on you. Uh, we look at this. I can speak for myself. I look at this as the entire product, the the game, the community, the the team behind it. I support all of it, and I'm here for the long term. So. I love when they openly say that. They say, listen, honestly, man, we're here for the long term. You're here for the short term. That's on you. We're here for the long term. We want to build a good game, a steady game, a stable game, a stable economy. And uh, I love that, that they're just open about it. They said, listen, you know what? You're here for the short term. That's on you, man. Um, thoughts on all that. I, lo I love that personally. Thoughts on all that. Yeah, that I, I kind of guess that's where they stood and them coming out and publicly saying it just confirmed it. And this ties into the biggest issue with all the hype that was built around this and the pushback of the time period it it definitely ties into the short-term uh flippers if you want to call them that they're upset that the lockdowns were not moved back in addition to the time of the game coming out being pushed back um they they said that they're thinking about it but i think that they i don't think they will push it back at all i'm, I'm like 99 percent sure they won't push it back in my opinion uh, they want to protect their relationships. And they've come out and said in this AMA that their long-term investors are tied into these locks and their locks are the longest in the industry currently. Mm -hmm. uh, they release these 
coinless tokens on December 21st, and you could only sell 50% of what you had. The next one comes up in November this year. That's a long time. They sold these tokens back, I don't know, in the fall of 2021, mm -hmm. and you can only access them on two different occasions and, you know, many months apart. And from what they said, it sounds like, I don't have inside information on this, it sounds like probably YGG, Blackpool, and some other big guilds in this space are part of those investors and they have some form of relationship with them because they want them in their community to do all these potential scholarships and bring in more people part of that millions and millions of people that they're talking about and so i don't think they're going to cross them because they need them and they have a relationship with them and i don't see them being unprofessional and, and pissing them people off and while they probably do value short-term flippers, because let's face it, we need their liquidity too. Mm -hmm. uh, their their primary focus is on the, their hardcore community followers that have assets and their long-term investors that are going to be around. And that's their stance on it. And I can't really blame them. I feel bad for the short-term investors a little bit because mm -hmm. I, I understand that they got sucked into the hype here recently. We all did, including myself. But things happen, and that's part of the risk of being a short-term uh, flipper. Right. You don't know, and that's that's the game. You don't know, and you, you, sometimes the sometimes you eat the bear, and sometimes the bear eats you, and that's where we're at with it. And I like the GOG stance on it. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to sound heartless. Of course, you know, I feel for them. I do, but you know, when you're coming in to invest to flip, you know, there's risks, and if you don't, then you got to do more research on it because I, I I feel like if you don't know the risks, you're in the wrong industry because that's just how it is. Um, speaking. Back. They'll be back. Trust me. Oh yeah. When, when we get sure. close launch, they'll be back. I agree. <laughs> uh, speaking of all that, um, better exchanges are on the list. They want to do uh, get on better exchanges. Uh, any idea which ones or? I think definitely Coinlist or not Coinlist. Uh, oh, Coinbase. I mm -hmm. think Coinbase will be on there. IMX is already on there. Uh, anyone that IMX is on your Gate IO. Uh, what else? Is that? I think it's on QCoin too. Yep. So I think anyone that IMX is on, they'll naturally follow into there. IMX is the parent and GOG is the child and they'll follow where uh, Big Daddy IMX goes. Yep. Also, no mini games before the game launch as they want to focus all resources on the launch. I'm a little hit and miss on this because here's the thing. Like I said before, you got to keep the interest. You got to keep the interest, okay? You have to keep people's interest if there's mini games or things. But I also want to go back to where um, every time they've, you know, made a little, I don't want to say mistake, but there's been a bump in the road. They've always kind of, you know, done something to kind of give back. Say, yo, yeah, we made a little mistake here or whatever. Here's a little something, you know, they always, they always fix their wrongs. Okay. And I think with this, uh, snapshot taken as the one that's going to, they're trying to, you know, apologize basically for the delay. Uh, but I do think maybe not mini games. I don't know, but I think they have to have something. It's probably going to be a lot of giveaways. They're probably gonna have to do a lot of like events, giveaways. If it's not a mini game, because they have to keep people interested. And, um, it, I don't know if a mini game is the right way to do it, you know, to be honest. So I'm not too worried about a mini game or whatever, because that's not what I'm here for. We're here for the game and the product and, and building the community and stuff. So, um, yeah, no mini game. Um, I'm okay with that, to be honest with you, but I feel like they do need to put a lot more things on the table, more events, more giveaways. I know giveaways kind of always sounds like, Oh, you're asking for stuff. I, you know, I never, first of all, I never asked for anything. I know you don't ask for anything, but it's like, you got to keep that community engaged. That's when I say things like that, it's about the entire community getting involved. Uh, very, very important. So what do you think on that with the no mini games and, um, they're focusing on the on the launch, which I prefer the actual game coming out. And if that sped that up without having a little mini game, I'm okay with that. But what are your thoughts on it? Uh, I'm fine with it. I, I I would rather them focus 100% mm -hmm. on the game itself. Uh, they talked about uh, they understand first mover advantage, but they also believe in quality. And first mover advantage is huge. It's so huge, and I I'm I'm fine with it. Maybe not everybody else. Uh, I. I would like mini games, but if it's going to cause even a 5% slowdown exactly. in the game coming out, nah. Uh, they they have, we, we've come out and said it before on this cast, uh, it's about pushing the rock for us and us core DGens. It's going to come up to us to keep the community engaged, uh, myself and many others. It's going to fall on our shoulders. And I think GOG knows we have this kind of verbal relationship and we, we are... On a whitelist pot, or not whitelist, uh, on the white paper as 
the more you're involved and the more you're doing, there's going to be some form of reward. We don't know what it is. It's a big leap of faith for us, but we are faithful in this project. We believe in this project. We are confident in this project. And so it's up to us to keep this community engaged. In my opinion, I'm going to do everything that I can. Yep. If they do throw out a mini game or whatever, hey, cool. It'll be a bonus to help us out. I'm sure they're going to do something that doesn't impede the game's progress. And my main focus is get the game out because first mover advantage yep. matters. I agree. And actually, speaking of, you know, how us, we talk about the game and stuff, they're revamping, and I got a lot to say about this, because they are revamping the um, ambassador program. They want to get more involved in Reddit. Let me tell you something, man. Um, you know, I am an ambassador of this, and I agree. I think they let in, t and, and I don't want to say, you know, they. I think they just, at first, they let in anybody. And I feel like a lot of the ambassadors either are quiet, they don't care for the project. To be honest with you, now this is my personal opinion, I think they got to either reset it all, start over, or just get rid of 90% of them because there's so many out there that don't care for the project or put anything into it. And I guess, I don't know, I haven't talked to them, but it's almost like they're just waiting to get the rewards or if, if there even is a reward, who even knows what's there? I just do it for the goodness of my heart because I enjoy this 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 community and stuff. So I feel like they feel like they're going to get some benefits from it or whatever, they want that title, but they don't put the work in behind it. And I feel like they really do need to either reset it, just say, yo, we're going to start fresh, uh, maybe in an application, whatever it is. But I, I, they really need to do something about it. And I'm glad that to hear that, that they want to revamp it. I don't know what that means. Maybe not bring in as many people. Um, I don't know what that means, but I like that. I like the fact that they're they're thinking about it because I tell you, man, I, I, from what I see, there's so many of them I just don't even pull any weight or anything. They just wanted that title. Uh, and then the whole Reddit thing, uh, a Reddit focus. I think that's good. Reddit's big. Reddit's huge. And I think uh, having a Reddit presence is is important as well. It's just like having Twitter or whatever. Uh, very, very, very important. What are your thoughts on the ambassador program, the Reddit focus? And uh, I think the quality over quantity, I've lived that, that way my entire life. Um, you know, it's quality over quantity always. And, uh, I like that they're going that route with the, with the program itself. So what are your thoughts on it, man? Uh, yeah, the, uh, the ambassador program, I think there's roughly 90 ish of us in there at the moment. And, you know, clearly not everyone is involved as everyone. And it, there really wasn't no parameter set for what needs to be done. It was just kind of wild west open. So maybe, Maybe the the people not as involved don't know what to do. They don't have proper direction, or maybe they feel a little bit overwhelmed because they see other people putting out stuff and they can't do as much as these other people. And maybe they're getting a little bit down on themselves. So my message is don't get down on yourself. Find what you're good at. Everybody's good at something, right. even if it's a little bit. We got people that strictly just do Twitter stuff and that's fine. You know, you know, come up with your own little clever way of something that makes it personal about you that you do well. So everybody does something well. Tie it in to what you do with your Twitter, or or if you don't know, ask around. I mean, ambassador chat. It's it's kind of been quiet for a while, and I noticed it that it started out strong and it's gotten kind of quiet. And I know Ryan is revamping it, and with the the Reddit army that they're going to be doing that's being led by Baird, awesome uh, person to be leading it. I think he's going to yes. do a quality job. The guy's very well articulated and he's quiet, but don't don't sleep on him. And he's an assassin. Don't don't you worry about it. And uh, I'm going to be trying to throw any weight I can behind whatever Baird wants to do to try and help him out. And that's that's one thing you can do right there as ambassador. Get behind right. the Reddit army, become become a big part of the Reddit army and push everybody push the rock. And, you know, maybe we just need to get a little bit better organized and uh, may maybe the people that are quiet will come out of the shadows and start helping us push the rock. and. I believe uh, Ryan is going to be selecting some more ambassadors, but probably not as many as the first time. Yeah, I think, and, and you actually brought up a really good point. I think even just helping push, even if you help push out the other content, just getting content, or retweeting it, liking it, sharing it, whatever it is, um, that's also another way to help uh, the program as well. But yeah, I, I think I think a lot of them need to start carrying more weight, to be honest with you, uh, if I got to be honest. Uh, but uh, yeah, help out, just whatever way you can, like you said, any way you can. That's actually really, really well, well said. Um, but yeah, and another thing, guys, if, if, if you ever want... If you ever need help, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out to myself or WT. My DMs are open. I'm always down to chat. If you have any questions, if you need ideas or whatever it is, if you want to just say, hey, introduce yourself, please, please, please do not hesitate. 
uh, I talk to anybody that DMs me. I'm always uh, interested in meeting new people from the community or people that have been in the community. I'm not, don't be shy. You know, I, uh, I love talking to people in the GOG community and I want to get to know everybody. You know, I'm a part of this and we're a part of the community and we love to get to know people. So uh, please, please, please reach out if you have any questions at all or if you if you ever want to come on the podcast. We have, uh, so we couldn't get uh, Dr. J last uh, week because something came up and he had to bail, but... That's going to be on Sunday. We're doing a podcast with him on Sunday. So we're going to get a really good... Yeah, I'm excited for that one too. And I know we have some other ones lined up. But if you want to come on the podcast, you have things to say, you have input, you think, uh, you know, people want... Come on in. Let us know and be like, hey, listen, Dr. J just reached out and said, hey, listen, man, I'm this, this, this. I think I'd be good for the podcast. Podcast, Perfect. Come on in. So yeah, if you you want to come on the podcast, chat with us, come let us know. You know what I mean? Uh, Don't be Mm -hmm. shy to reach out. Okay. So... um, and another thing about speaking of like the GOG uh, guilds, you know, YGG and, and Blackpool, um, they reiterated that they will not be doing a scholarship program. It's going to be a third party or do it on your own or whatever it is. Um, I've talked about this before. I do play another game where there is a scholarship program and it's all done on their site. It's very, 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 very easy. You literally just click the the button, say uh, Sedalian. It's called Sedalian over there. Sedalian program. You put the uh, the person signs up with the email. You put in their email. Boom, it's connected. Boom, it's done. Everything's automatic. You can put a week. You can you can put them as a scholar for a week. You can put them as a scholar for a month. You can put them on a scholar for 10 years, whatever you want. Once that timeline is over, they're automatically disconnected from your account. They get paid out all their stuff on time, whatever it is. It's all done automatically. I like that. But at the same time, um, I think GOG is like, listen, that's not our problem. Our problem is the game. If you guys want to do scholarships, that's that's not what our view is, and that's not our vision. That's on you guys. You guys want to do scholarships, and I'm cool with that too. Would I be trusting it and using it? Maybe not. But um, you know, if it's somebody else, a third party thing or whatever, I, maybe I'm not going to use it. But uh, I like that they're they're str- they're firm on it. Said no, uh, we have nothing to do with it. We want nothing to do with it. That's on you guys if you want to do it. So uh, thoughts on on the scholarship program and the third party side of it. Yeah, I got mixed feelings about this. I get why they're doing it, uh, and I want them to focus on the game because first mover advantage matters, as I've said before. Mm-hmm. But man, I, I, when and when and whoever comes out with this, I will be combing them with a, a fine toothbrush, and I, I do not want to risk my assets. So I will be taking my time when and if that comes out. I hope it's a big name uh, in a big community like YGG or somebody like that that is spearheading this. Because uh, if there's any way, shape, or form that my wallet can be compromised, I'm not going to be touching it, which saddens me because a big part of me doing all this is I want to be able to rent out some of my assets to make some passive income to start getting back what I've put into this. So that was a big uh, reason why I invested heavily in this game. So I want it to be here, but man, I, I'm, I'm, I'll be going slow, slow and steady. So I'll tell you, so uh, I don't know if you're familiar with YGG and stuff. So basically what YGG is, it's a, it's a massive, massive, and there's lots of them out there, massive guilds. And basically what it is, so if you're new to like the, the play to earn um, space and stuff like that, it, these guilds are really good for people that are, you know, they're new to the space or they don't have the funds to kind of buy in and stuff. So, YGG is usually not really there for, for people that have their own assets or that are deep in the space. Usually it's for people that are just getting into it because what it is is they buy all their you know heroes, whatever it is, and it gives you a chance to play the game and earn from it without putting anything in your own pocket. Once you get enough of your own money through the game, you can say, okay, well, I'm going to buy my own heroes now and you can move on and do your own thing. So it's usually like a, a, a YGG and all these big guilds. Usually, some of these are more on the esports level, but some of these are like, like especially YGG, is more to get people involved in the game, which is massive for a game like Guild of Guardians. Getting a, a guild like YGG in there, getting all their players into the game uh, to get them started is massive. So... Um, I, th- I think I don't think YGG would come up with an entire thing. They have their own to work with, and trust me, they have many, many, many people. So they got a lot to deal with on their end. But uh, I don't know if it's gonna be like a certain company to do it, or just people are gonna do it on their own. I don't know. It's gonna be interesting. But I don't know if I'm gonna get involved with that. To be very honest with you, it's not my not my kind of thing. Uh, okay, another thing, guys. We need to really uh, uh, knock this in. Okay, no more founder pets <laughs> and heroes. Stop asking. I don't know how many times they got to say it. No, no more pets, founders, pets, no more founder heroes, guys. They're done. That's it. Do we got to say it again? I don't know. Do you got to say it? Yep. What do you think? WD? Do you think there's more pets and heroes, founder, besides pets and heroes, adventure guilds, besides adventure yep. guilds. No, the word founder, if it's attached to it, it's done yeah. over with. Let's move on. 
So what you're saying is there's going to be more founder pets and heroes is what you're trying to say? I just want to make sure because I'm confused. <laughs> I don't think they said no enough. I just want to make sure because every AMA, every – what about no. the founder pets? Is there – no. Okay, moving on. Okay. Uh, what about the founder pets? No, no, move on. Okay. So, they, guys – Derek did come out and say that, you know, they have come out and said that there will be things to facilitate new players coming in. So that tells me mm-hmm. other pets. Yes, other heroes, founder. Other energy tokens or uh, boosters. Mm-hmm. So how powerful will they be compared to the founders? We don't know yet. Uh, they said that there's going to be special perks for the founders right. that we do know what it is. We don't know. So yeah. no more founder edition heroes, pets, boosters, just the adventure token. I'm going to say it one more time. No more <laughs> founder, founder. Yeah, horse. Yeah, I don't know how many ter- more times people got to ask. I'm going to ask it next time. I'm going to, I'm going to go in and ask. Like, so, guys, just I want to be clear. Is there more founder pets and heroes? I just I don't know. I, it's not clear. You guys aren't clear. Uh, I tell you, it drives me bananas every time I hear that. Okay. So, um, yes, no more founder. So, usually with founders and stuff, there's usually – I mean, I don't know how they're going to do it here. I honestly have no idea. But a lot of times what people do is like there'll be like a 10% stat, better stat or something like that. Uh, the stats are 10% better or whatever. There's always a little perk to having them. I don't know if they're doing that here or not, but nope, usually that's what it is. Not. Uh, not doing that either. No there you stat. go. None of that. No copies of the founder to like uh, a Cyrus or Leah. There, there you go. A Cyrus or Leah again because they are attached to founders. That's there you what go. Derek said him, said himself. Breeding uh, for pets was a firm no, but Derek said it was an interesting idea. Uh, what do you think about breeding pets? Because I think pets. Listen, I I've, we say this all the time. Pets are so overlooked right now. They're founder pets anyway are so overlooked right now. Talk to me. It's it's the same concept as uh, Sorcier brought up, in my opinion. If you want to reward the founders and not limit new people coming in, there's your perk right there. Let them breed the pets and get uh, some sort of staking kickback or just a kickback for breeding those pets out to the community. Uh, I don't know if you'd be able to sell them or what, but I, I think you follow the same route as what this uh, gentleman Sorcier said with the Adventure Guilds. That's... I love that idea. And as soon as he said that, I started thinking about the pets and even possibly energy boosters. If you want to kick them out, the people put it in the hands of the, the founders and there's the perk. You kill two birds with one stone right there. The energy boosters. That's another one. That's another one. Um, okay. So when the alpha comes out, I think it's going to regenerate all the hype again. I think it's going to go bananas again. In my personal opinion, that's usually how it is whenever there's hype around a project. Um, yeah. When alpha, right? So I think when alpha comes out, that's when we're going to get the hype again. I think the markets are going to start moving. What's the markets looking like today? How are things down, up, staying the same? I know Reborn, like, listen, man, you know me. I was obsessed with with uh, with Reborn. I was obsessed with this energy hero. I was like, I need to have it. I don't know why, what it was about him. It's just like, I need him. That's my style of character. I mean, it was a couple hundred bucks or whatever. So very, very cheap compared to everybody else. Uh, and I was like, you know what? If I need a legendary hero, this is the route I'm going. I just, I liked it. Um, talk to me. Talk to me about the prices. Talk about what's what's uh, what's reborn going for now. It's like super cheap. What's everything going? What's the markets looking like? Uh, they're they're terrible right now compared to what it was. Uh, right. We're we're in a GOG bear market right now. Mm-hmm. It happens. Uh, I'm not I'm not thrilled about it, but I'm not worried about it. It's just it is what it is. Like I said at the beginning, if we get a hard date, these prices are going to skyrocket, which is what everyone was probably thinking was going to happen. Mm-hmm. And we got the opposite, and so now they're going the opposite way. Uh, reborn was going for like. 0.072 this morning, uh, down from like 0.129, I think is what it was. 0.129, now he's at 0.071. Just about everything is down roughly 50% at this time. Uh, if if you wanted to get in this and you've time. got the liquidity, here's your chance. And mm-hmm. I don't know how long this is going to go for. Uh, it looks like the prices have maybe stabilized where they're at. Maybe we're at the floor. There is a ton of assets out in the market right now compared to what there used to be. It's I used to have to scroll. I scroll through each page every day, looking through all the heroes and stuff to get the price of each one of the heroes, each one of the pets. And it takes me a lot longer to scroll now because there's so much more on there. So yeah, uh, yeah that's that's the state of the market right now. If you got liquidity and you want it in and you're waiting for a good time, they're down 50% right now. Here's your yeah. chance. I think this, well, you guys already know my stance on it. I bought my five heroes, my three pets. 
Uh, I'm still borrowing your profile picture. So, I mean, you know, I don't even have my own <laughs> profile. down too. Those this, are down too. This might be the time to get in and, and, and boost up my, my squad, right? Because uh, like I said, it's 50%. It's like a, it's like a Black Friday sale. I mean, what, what can go wrong, right? So uh, I, li- I like it. I like the idea of it. I might have to put some more in myself. Uh, not financial advice, obviously. But uh, yeah, I think we kind of, I wanted to kind of fire through them all because there was a ton to talk about. Mm-hmm. Is there anything we didn't talk about that you want to bring up? Uh, the, the one question that I had that I was worried about the most, the only thing that scares me more than losing my wallet is regulation and app store issues. They said that is not part of the reason why this is delayed. So I was super to hear you about, super happy to hear about that. Mm -hmm. Nothing scares me more than those two right right there. Right. Oh, another thing I want to say, um, I want to say, guys, if you are an ambassador, you are a speaker of the, of this game please be careful what you put out there that's that's the biggest thing for me i want to say right now uh just please be careful what you put out there don't don't risk the the name of 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 the entire game and and the community just to give yourself a few extra views do not do that that is something that we need to really avoid doing because you know it's uh we can't do that stuff we can't do that we got to do better uh as ambassadors and everything ourselves we got to do better than that stuff uh do do not do stuff like that so yeah Push the game forward. Be positive about it, and uh, let's let's grow this together, guys. Um, but yeah, I agree. I think uh, I think uh, you know everything is pretty good. I think it was a busy week. We had a good AMAs. We had some good uh, things. Obviously, the market you know is doing what it's doing, but no big deal. There was no Super Bowl commercial. Uh, I kind of figured that. That's that's that was a, a little bit of a stretch. But I know you were like, I know you were. I, listen, Matt, I would never want to break a man's dream. You know, I never want to break a man's dream. You tell me you want to fly, go fly, baby. You know what I mean? But it was a little bit of a stretch. You know, we got to say it was a. Little yeah. Yeah, I know. But you know, uh, I love you. You know that. Uh, but anyway, uh, anything else you want to say before we go? Uh, close it up. I think it was a. I think it was a really good podcast. There was a lot of information thrown out there. Uh, again, we tried to get everything in without just kind of you know just kind of you know glazing over it. We tried to get in there without taking too long on it because. Uh, there was a lot to to talk about. And again, on Sunday, we are talking to Doctor Jim. Super excited about that. He seems like an awesome guy. Uh, what else do you want to say? Anything else before we close up? Uh, just to everybody. As always, breathe and don't be surprised if there's another delay. Nobody is mm-hmm. getting through this fast. Uh, I'm in several of the projects. They're all having delays and their prices go down when there's delays. This is normal and expect a longer timeline than what they're saying. Uh, my personal thoughts, I don't think we'll see a full game come out till early 2024. That's my opinion. Right. I think uh, I think they're still being a little just a touch quick on their expectations and they're going to they're going to run into difficulties. This is a brand new space. We're not in the infancy space right now. That was 2017, but we're in the toddler stage. And when you're in the toddler stage, you're trying to run, you're trying to do things and you fall, you bang your knee, you get scrapes, and that's going to happen. So, let's let's be realistic, but still confident that we're in a blue chip project so that's how i feel about everything right now beauty well said um yeah i i totally i still believe in this i mean we always talk about it on the stream or or, you know uh again guys i want to say if you guys are watching this you are this far come by the stream get to know us get to know the community we actually have guild of guardian emotes in my stream we have guild of guardian emotes in my stream uh which actually one of them you made wt you made the uh, reborn hero i don't know why i'm so obsessed with this hero why am i so obsessed with this guy it's two-hander. You're a two-handed uh, I am. slayer. So we, if he was an orc, you'd like him even more. I would. I, you know, I'm surprised I, I'm with the M- – I'm an Empire kind of guy. You know, I went all Empire. But, yeah, man, it, it's funny because uh, I've, every Saturday I just got into D&D. I'm, I've never played D&D before in my life, but I just got into it. I didn't know that WT's into D&D. We have through oh, yeah. the community. There's a bunch of us we play on Saturdays and stuff. And then WT found out we played D&D. He's like, what are you talking about, man? And I showed him my character, and, and he realized I don't know what the hell I'm doing, which I don't know what I'm doing. I, you know, horrible at it. Hor- He's like, what, are you, what is that? What are you doing? Anyway. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm pretty bad at it, but I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning. But yes, the two-handed, that's my style. So as soon as I saw Reborn with the two-handed, I said, I have to have that. It's a must. And uh, and so I bought it. So anyway, uh, if you guys are into that, uh, Reborn's super cheap. Super cheap. What about uh, what about energy boosters? How are those looking these days? They're down point, uh, point zero 0.08-ish. Uh, everything's wow. down, dude. Everything. Telling you, man, those don't sleep on the energy boosters. Do not sleep. Nope. They made it very clear, though, there, there may be more, but they'll never be that good. And uh, do not sleep on those. Um, okay, I think that's good for everything, guys. Don't forget, leave comments below. Let us know what you thought about the podcast. Um, if you think of any cool names for the podcast, please um, write it below. Let us know. There's uh, the Twitter uh, on, on one of uh, WT's tweets. I'll put it in the comment below. Come by the Twitch channel. Uh, we love you. 
again, like he says, breathe. You're a bunch of beauties. And uh, I tell you, man, we're this. Is, I'm so confident in this. I'm so confident in this game. It's uh, I'll talk about it all the time. We talk about it on the stream. Once I get to play it, I will play it on the stream. Uh, it'll take over the stream for sure. It'll be a big, 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 big point of the stream. So I'm super excited for that. So if you want to get to know us and, and before we start doing all that stuff, come on by. WT, I'll see you in, what, two days, man? We're going to do this again in two days. Yeah. Do Two this days. Again. Bang, bang, back to back. All right. Uh, always a pleasure. You're a beauty. Everyone, you're a beauty. WT, we're out of here. Peace.